This video is sponsored by the Reverb Black Friday sale. Click the link in the description to see the deals and get $15 towards your first purchase. Hello guys, Colin here. I'm a huge supporter of the resurgence of compact, low wattage valve amplifiers. They are convenient, easy to use and sound amazing. Whenever I talk about amplifiers of this power rating however, one question keeps popping up with quite alarming frequency. Is 15 watts loud enough to play with a band? And the answer to that seems obvious to me, yes of course it is. Now if you're watching this video you're probably one of the people who's looked at that number 15 and went, nah, a number that small can't possibly be loud enough. I need at least 50, no, 100 watts, that's going to be way louder. But then you'd be the victim of a fundamental misunderstanding of how power and volume relate to each other. Power, that is the amount of watts your amplifier can dish out, does not scale linearly with volume. That is to say that doubling the power doesn't give you double the loudness. To get twice as loud, you effectively need 10 times the power. It's a logarithmic scaling. So your 15 watt amp going full throttle is half as loud as a maxed out 150 watt amplifier. Now if you've ever used a 100 watt amp with a band, ask yourself, realistically now, how high you needed to set that master volume control? Chances are you didn't even get the volume halfway before the bass player started complaining and if you tried that at a live show, the sound engineer would almost certainly be screaming at you to turn it down. With an effective volume range of more than half that of a 100 watt head, a 15 watt lunchbox amp has every bit of muscle needed for practice and live performance with a band. In fact, at the scalings we are talking about, there is practically no difference in volume between a 50 watt and a 100 watt amp. They are just about as loud as each other. The difference is in headroom, which is more of a tonal consideration than a volume one and something we'll talk about some other time. It's also worth remembering that 100 watt amps have a maximum output of 100 watts, achieved only when the volume is full. At low volume settings, the amp's only chucking out a fraction of that wattage, meaning that you're probably only using up to 15 watts anyway without even realising it. Okay, let me just tag in here and clarify something before all the angry comments begin. That statement is only true under certain circumstances, namely a perfect amplifier that does not distort. It's more of a theoretical ideal. In reality, there are many ways in which the maximum power of an amplifier can be reached before the volume control arrives at its end stop, leading to a situation where you can keep increasing the volume but doesn't get any louder. This goes back to the headroom argument which I'm trying not to touch on in this video for the sake of simplicity. By using hotter pickups, positioning the pickups closer to the strings, using effects that boost the level of the signal, or indeed by using a lot of preamp gain, we can reach the maximum power of the amplifier, and by extension its maximum loudness, well before we reach the maximum volume setting. Continuing to turn the volume up doesn't get louder, it simply adds more distortion and saturation. Volume and loudness are two separate ideas that really shouldn't be confused, but it still does stand if you're using low volume settings on your amp, you're using less than your amplifier's maximum wattage. Maybe just a little closer to it than your volume control implies, depending on your setup. So now you're probably asking yourself, well if 15 watts is more than loud enough, why do we even have 100 watt amps? And the answer to that is a history of live music, but before we dive down that rabbit hole of vintage gear and gigs of the past, we should probably talk about what's available right now from Reverb, the sponsor of this video. Ah, Black Friday! That day where retailers coerce the public into fighting each other like animals over some discounted tat they probably didn't need anyway. This year you can save yourselves the bloody lips and broken bones as the Reverb Black Friday sale has deals on over 100,000 listings you'll actually want, which can be perused from the comfort of your own home. Being the largest musicians marketplace on the planet, Reverb have a million listings of new, used, boutique and vintage gear covering guitars, amps, effects, synths, home recording and more. Offering buyer and seller protection and with a team of customer service staff poised to assist, you can be assured that no one is going to punch your baby in the face to steal that last vintage pedal from your clawing desperate hands. And best of all, Reverb are offering you viewers the chance to get $15, or pounds and euros if you live on a better continent, to spend when you sign up using the link in the description of this video. 
So what better time to grab yourself that classic low wattage amp than right now? Follow the link in the description to view the great reverb Black Friday deals. 100 watt guitar amps didn't always exist. Back in the late 50s, bands like The Shadows were using 15 watt combo amps night after night on stage. The Vox AC15 was their weapon of choice and it was not only loud enough to play with the rest of the band, but loud enough to fill the packed music halls that they were playing. At that time, guitar amplifiers weren't mic'd up and sent through a front of house sound system like they are today. Every bit of guitar sound in the room was coming from the amps on stage. 15 watts, Valve, was loud enough to fill the entire space. But with the growing popularity of guitar bands, thousands of fans would cram venues, and in the late 50s and early 60s, it was strangely fashionable for young girls to spend the entire show screaming. If you've ever seen footage of the Beatles or the Shadows from this time period, the wall of high-pitched, constant screaming is not only terrifying, but in some venues, louder than the acts on stage. Bands at this time were in a volume war with their own fans, and without the assistance of a front of house to help project the sound of the instruments, musicians found themselves outmanned and outgunned. It's rumoured that the Shadows spoke to Vox regarding the dilemma of not being able to hear their guitars over the sound of the screaming fans, and Vox came to their rescue with the AC-30, a more powerful version of the AC-15 they were using at the time. It was double the power, but more importantly double the speakers, which made it considerably louder. As time went on, shows became bigger and bigger. Rock and roll was insanely popular from the late 60s right through to the 80s, and shows in music halls became giant outdoor stadium shows attended by hundreds of thousands of people all screaming their heads off. With front of house sound systems still not man enough to handle vocals and guitars, amplifiers needed to become powerful enough to chuck serious volume across huge distances and thousands of heads. In fact, it was Pete Townsend who allegedly went to Marshall and said, four speakers isn't loud enough, we need eight. After the roadies complained about carrying the monstrous 8x12 cabinets that were prototyped, Marshall came up with a solution of stacking two 4x12 cabinets atop one another. This is where we get our iconic image of multiple 100 watt heads atop a wall of stacked speaker cabs. Back in those days, that was all plugged in and live, grunting out ear-splitting volume levels. More amps, more cabinets, more volume. If you see that today, however, I guarantee it's all just plywood fronts. Nothing more than a stage prop with a small head or digital modelling amp behind the curtain powering the front of house. The old school method was an aid of getting volume without distortion. 100 watt heads have plenty of headroom and so can chuck out volume without saturating the tone. Nowadays, that's quite unnecessary. With the advance of front of house technology, we can now mic up guitar cabs and keep the onstage volume levels to practically nothing. 100 watt heads, therefore, are simply too powerful for today's usage. Frankly, anything over 30 watts is totally overkill for most modern live applications, and as a result we've seen a resurgence of feature-packed, low-wattage valve amps that make ideal home, studio and live performance tools. We've managed to come full circle back to the sensible wattages that bands started off with in the 50s. Loud enough to play with the band, and loud enough to go over the heads of a few thousand people. In this video here, I check out the MT-15, Tremonti's signature 15 watt amplifier from PRS. This was running through a 2x12 cabinet with the volume not even a quarter of the way up. We peaked the decibel meter in the room at 101 decibels. Now granted, we were in close proximity and volume drops rapidly with distance, but in that room it was insanely loud, and that amp had the potential for so much more, both by cranking the volume and by feeding more speakers. Thinking back to my previous interjection, this raises an interesting question. Just how much more does this amp have to give in terms of loudness? The MT-15 has a monstrous amount of gain and that will be promoting its maximum power output well before the maximum volume setting. It could well be that 3 or 4 in the volume control here is the majority of its 15 watts and therefore most of its loudness. Granted, I think there's more loudness to be had here, but maybe not as much as I originally thought. 
This leads to the thought that amp designers might actually be deliberately designing their amps this way. Knowing that customers can only try the amps at low volume settings, putting the majority of the loudness in the first half of the volume control might make their amps sound louder than a competitor amp which has a more honest volume control. All the more reason to turn your amps up and see what they really do. Another factor many people don't consider in the volume equation is speaker sensitivity. The speakers you use have a far more prominent impact over the overall volume than increasing the power of your amplifier. The cabinet is greater than the amp, but that's something I'll cover in a video about speaker cabinets another time. Hopefully this has given you some better insight into the relationship between volume and power and given you the confidence to know that little 15 and 20 watt amps are serious tools that are more than loud enough for band applications. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that you need 100 watts to be heard. Unless it's the 80s, you're playing stadiums and you have thousands of girls screaming at you, and let's be honest, you don't, then low wattage amplifiers are more than loud enough. Thanks once again to the Reverb Black Friday sale for sponsoring this video. Get yourself that low wattage amp with a link in the description. And if you like this video and you want to see more content from me, then you can hit that subscribe button, which will notify you of all new content as it comes out. My Patreon's also there for exclusive secret stuff, t-shirts also available, and there's other videos you may not have seen. But that's all for now, guys. Keep it loud, and I will see you later. And I know about making girls scream.